You're still watching Week in Focus on WBS TV. Welcome back. The probe committee set up to investigate Umeme and the Electricity Regulatory Authority over power tariffs hit a snag again, with the key witness snubbing the probe. The tribunal said that was informed that the permanent secretary at the Ministry of Energy, Kabagambe Kalisa, was unable to make it because he was on official duty and the probe was adjourned until the 27th of February this year. Our reporter, Stella Nabakoza, reported. The key witness at the center of the alleged scandals in the energy sector is the permanent secretary at the Minister of Energy, Kabagambe Kalisa. He was expected to show up before this probe committee to give his side of the story about the findings of the salary report on the energy sector, which squarely pinned him at the center of entering government into a bad agreement with a South African-based company, Umeme and ESCOM, that has seen Uganda's taxpayer losing billions of shillings to these companies monthly. But to the surprise of the probe team, the embattled P.S. Kalisa declined to show up, claiming that he was on leave. He's on his official leave. When the date was fixed by the tribunal, we never consulted him. So we just fixed a date for the 29th, and uh, he, we never knew that he would not be available. We are hoping he will be available on the 27th. Though the panel of investigators was left with no option but to adjourn the probe to February 27 this year, it's on record of the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee report of March last year when the PS described the salary report to have been written by street boys. This meant to Parliament that Kalisa had reservations about the findings of the report and the technical know-how of Jeno Salim Saleh's team that came up with the report. Kabagambe's failure to show up before this probe sparked off a heated debate from Umeme and air officials with counter accusations of attempts to withhold information from the tribunal. The Electricity Regulatory Authority seeks to block this report being brought into evidence for consideration by the tribunal. I think the allegation that we're sitting on the report is absolutely false. That false, first of all, it's an old report of 2008, mm. Nine. Mm. It has been out in the public. It affects Umeme. Umeme has always known about it. It implicates Umeme in a lot of irregularities. We've read about it, so we know. And we want to demonstrate our case uh, by highlighting uh, sections in the report, uh, which are very evident. And it is uh, uh, for the sake of justice, uh, I think the tribunal should be availed that report. Key at the center of this contention is the alleged fraud cited in the operations of Umeme and Era. We had our revenue requirement reduced by uh, some $10 million in the US. Uh, so that is uh, as a critical, which means that what we had planned to undertake using the requirement we submitted to the regulator cannot be fulfilled yeah, if the amount is taken out on account of a, uh, a matter which is before the tribunal. Do you know of any business enterprise that takes free cash? Everyone takes their entitlement and that's what the regulator has done. Uh, and those amendments were taken to protect the sector. They were taken to protect the sector. Umeme was making unjustifiable earnings to the detriment of the consumer. It was not paying taxes. That is the allegation of my plan. In 2013, the Adho Committee of Parliament investigating Umeme came up with a report to Parliament suggesting that Umeme's contract be terminated for gross inflating of electricity tariffs in connivance with the Electricity Regulatory Authority. But to the disappointment of the probing committee of parliament into Umeme operations, a section of legislators were reported to have been summoned for a workshop by Umeme officials at one of the hotel, and each was paid 5 million shillings to ensure that they failed the Umeme report that it was intended to have its contract cancelled. Stella Nabakoza, WBS TV, Kampala. Reports this week yet to be confirmed indicated that President Museveni has pushed his Minister for Presidency Frank Tumwebaze Kajiji on forced suspension following a security tip-off that the new entrant to cabinet stashed 10 billion shillings on his fixed account held in one of the urban banks in Kampala. 
President Museveni upon getting hold of this alleged security dossier on his minister, Tumwebaze, immediately convened a meeting at his country home of Rachitura on December 31st, 2014, where he quizzed the minister for some good hours about the purported money. However, Minister Tumwebaze on his social media platform dismissed these reports as contemptuous and being peddled by his political rivals. President Museveni is reported to have sent his minister in charge of presidency, Frank Tumwebaze, on a forced leave to allow clean probe into the purported 10 billion ceiling scandal alleged to have been found banked on his fixed deposit account in one of the banks in the town. Minister Tumwebaze's alleged scandal is reported to have been generated by security dossier on him to the president and revealing the presence of the funds on the account held in his name. On 31st December 2014, the president is reported to have summoned Tumwebaze to his country home of Rakitura over the matter and Tumwebaze is reported in the meeting to have failed to explain the source of the money and this formed the basis of an immediate investigation of the minister. In the attempt to trace the footprints of the scandal, it should be remembered that towards December 15, 2014, in RM Namboli's delegates conference, some Prom 7 diehards were dispatched to promote his sole candidature and undermine the Secretary General then, Amama Mbabazi, who would later be deposed. Promoters of his mission included Major General Kahinda Otafire, who took Eastern Region, Rosina Mayanja in charge of Central Region, Richard Todong and Sam Ngola in charge of Northern, while Tumwebaze and Jim Wezi were in charge of Western Uganda. It is true, we are getting a lot of uh, information. There are those who are being mobilized to destabilize our conference, we are aware. There are even uh, serious information that some people want to harm the delegates saying that they can run away and not go to Nambore. You can see how some people are cowards. Reports hovering around indicate these top shots used the opportunity to cut away as much as they could during the process of bringing delegates and citizens to dump Amama. However, it is still unclear whether this is the forum to Mwebaze allegedly used to pile huge sums of money on his account. As the Katost Road fraud raged on, Tumwebaze was once more cited in the mega 22 trillion ceilings standard gauge railway scandals. There are those who are mobilizing delegates, non delegates, to come and overwhelm us at Nambore, such that if we chase them away, like we shall, of course, they go out and claim to the media that they are, they are denied entry because of being somebody's supporters, but in essence, they are not delegates. Then there is also a strategy that if we can allow some of them by accident, then they have a reason to go to court. You know, so far all their court cases are corruption. He has always denied involvement in this saga. With the countdown of 11 months to the president's supports, civil society organizations raised concerns about the absence of legislation to check on the anticipated exorbitant expenditures many incumbents and contenders are considering to pump into their campaigns to win votes. An independent survey conducted by civil society organizations advocating for transparency revealed that 90% of all contenders and incumbents spend millions of shillings, including buying votes, therefore making it difficult for the electorate to demand for accountability in service delivery. This goes with spending for one to convince the electorate that it's worth to represent them. However, to civil society organizations, this is wrong. They call for punitive measure to restrict leaders on how much they must spend during elections. It comes to the actual time of enacting this law and whether they will actually agree to this law, that is a very big question that we need to take. So there should be very strict punitive measures. This should include very heavy fines. This should include the person being barred from contesting for any political office. <laughs> Civil society organizations hold the view that such gesture deny voters better service delivery. Majority of those elected end up focusing on ripping back what they propagated. Ugandans have been deprived of the power and right to objectively determine who their next, next leaders are going to be. 
And this again is very bad for democracy because it does undercut the integrity of the electoral process. You realize that particular services that should be offered by government end up being borne by the independent. In Uganda, apparently the legal regime only requires aspiring members of parliament and presidential candidates only declare their wealth status, but it remains silent on one's expenditure. On many occasions, those aspiring for positions in leadership end up selling off their goods while the incumbents are normally roughed up on the streets by money sharks in town and end up also having their assets auctioned. The China Civil Engineering and Construction Corporation said it has withdrawn a legal suit filed against the government of Uganda so as not to jeopardize future prospects for construction projects in Uganda. This was contained in reports from the Parliamentary Committee probing the standard gauge railway who are currently in China. According to the report this, that was revealed by Zhao Jinghua, the senior assistant president of China Railway Construction Corporation Limited, CRCC, in a meeting with the Parliamentary Select Committee on the Standard Gauge Railway led by the chairperson and Nachifuma County MP Honor Bokafero Sechitoleko. He added that after receiving a letter from the Ugandan Minister for Works about the suit, they asked their representatives to withdraw the case. The meeting took place at the CRCC headquarters in Beijing, China on Tuesday, the 27th of January 2015. The China Civil Engineering and Construction Corporation is a subsidiary company of China Railway Construction Corporation Limited. The chairperson of the committee, Honorable Sechitoleko, wondered why CRCC as a parent company did not take interest in the Ugandan Standard Gauge Railway and sought to know the status of CRCC's uh, ownership of C. C -E -C -C. Poor governance was identified as one of the major challenges facing progress in various municipalities in Uganda. This during the division mayor's meeting in Kampala, where over 30 divisional and municipality mayors converged to look for ways forward into ensuring local governments at this level can improve on service delivery. The Division of Mayors are meeting to discuss ways of improving services at LC3 level and share experiences to offer learning from each other. In a discussion session Wednesday, poor governance was seen as one of the challenges facing most leaders at this level. They were urged to lead their electorate without fear or favor. Particularly, uh, the physical structure development. For example, various roads that have been rehabilitated, newly constructed, others have been repaired using mainly resources generated by the KCCA. Moroli also says there is need for work plans to guide activities and outputs, but also getting support from the people they lead. You have noticed the redevelopment of uh, public facilities like taxi parks. You've seen how the city has been reorganized by pulling down uh, old dilapidated structures and constructing modern structures that actually fit the situation. The division of mayors also need to have some legal knowledge to properly run their areas without acting illegally and exposing themselves to court processes. Some of them, however, say their area should not be compared to what happens in Kampala as Kampala is far better than what is in other parts of the country. As cases here, we inherited over 130 cases, court cases. The Magistrates' Court, High Court, Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court. All these cases, very complicated by the way. A number of them haven't been resolved. The difference between a contribution and a sacrifice. When you are a leader, most times you're making a sacrifice. And it is not easy, but it sets a good example. The Leadership Summit that ends Friday is aimed at engaging local governments for national transformation of cities and the country as a whole. Zamzam Siraj, 
WBS News, Kampala. You are still watching Weekend Focus on WBS TV. Please do stay with us.